So before I commence, I must tell you three things. One, I'm not really fluent in English, so you may not be able to understand me, but please get over it, please. Thank <laughs> you for that. And two, um, I'm not a great public speaker. I've never spoken in front of a crowd of this size, and I'm actually nervous. My legs are going to shake pretty soon, and yeah. So if that happens, get over it, get over it, please. <laughs> I can have anything for that as well. And lastly, I may start crying in the middle of this speech. I've been crying like every single day since last week. But this is actually an emotional moment for me. And if that if I burst into tears, just pull me out from here. <laughs> okay, so let me begin. First of all, it is a great honor for me to stand here to represent my friends in class of 2015. And yet this accomplishment of mine was not obtained by myself. It was possible for there were so many people who have supported me, who have provided me with love and care and guidance. So therefore I feel the strong necessity to acknowledge these people before I actually commence. So first of all, thank you my mom and my mom, my dad, and my younger brothers who are here today. working hard and strive for the best I can be. Thank you. And next, I'd like to say thank you to my friends, the class of 2015. You guys are amazing. Your work ethics, your responsibility, your integrity always inspired me. Your friendship and brotherhood provide me with security. I enjoyed every single second that I share with you guys, and I'll miss you a lot next year. And special shout out to Mom and Papi. Mom and Papi. You told me how to play like basketball, and that was the most important lesson in my life. That all uh, well, this life, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> and I cannot explain all my gratitude today because the margin of this paper is kind of narrow. So, but please remember that I love you all, and I and I'm really proud of every single one of you. And next, I'd like to say thank you to my fellow Garrett peers. For me, Garrett was a home away from home. Garrett offered me everything that I needed and everything that I wanted. Friendship, camaraderie, enthusiasm, and love. And in Garrett, I met so many people who helped me become who I am today. Mr. Roberts told me how to be disciplined and responsible. Kizar and Wes told me how to love and care for other people. And though they graduated two years ago, Rod and Nathana, taught me how to appreciate true friendship. I think being part of Garrett was a, perhaps the best blessing that God offered me at CFS. And I'll, I also have to say thank you to my fellow choir members. Hey. 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 Choir was the activity that I enjoyed the most and dream my and it now has become part of me. To be honest, I have never sung before I came to CFS. So I was kind of afraid and reluctant to doing choir at first. But once I did, I have never regret, regretted my decision to do so. It introduced me to so many great friends. Elijah, Stephen, Russ, Tony, Che, and Julian. It was really pleasant to see you, see you guys for four years. Thank you for working so hard and letting me have so memorable concerts throughout my years. Especially this year's concert was so great that I burst into tears after the performance. And thank you. And thank you my basement brothers, um, Trace Pocaranas, Edward Kim, and Ellen Yen. It was exciting to witness you guys grow as singers and adults. So keep up the good work for next year. And last but not least, thank you Mr. Gretz for introducing me to the realm of music and to the grace of God. You are the, you are the embodiment of a true educator, for you not only provide me with knowledge, but also touch my heart. The guidance you offered me for five years made me grow as a musician, as a scholar, and as a young adult. Even when I could not play my recital piece the night before recital, you still told me that you believed in me. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to, I'd like to say thank you to every faculty member of this community. You not only endeavored to satiate our intellectual desire, but also to forge us into young men with great hearts and moral virtues. Mr. Mabey, you are an awesome advisor. 
who showed us how to be a scholar, an ambitious dreamer, and a great father. And Mr. Palmer, you made us appreciate studying history, which, which could have been easily like one of the most tedious subjects of her evening, but not for me. But I was motivated and excited every single second in your class, and I really appreciate you for that. And Mrs. Hughes and Ms. Clark, thank you for teaching me the beauty of Spanish language and culture. Though I could not fix my Asian accents, no matter how hard I tried, <laughs> I was able to explore new culture and language in second hand. And thank you, Mr. Otero, for intellectually challenging me. In your class, I learned the beauty of mathematics. I learned how to wrestle with difficult questions. I learned the catharsis that I felt every time I solved the difficult questions that I once that I once seemed insurmountable. And lastly, thank you every administrator for working day in and day out to make sure that we are getting the best education we can get. Your effort may be set as something that I can be really proud of. So this is the end of the prologue, and now let me actually begin my speech. <laughs> Don't worry, this is not going to be long. This is just a short anecdote about an Asian boy who just came to the States and was so nervous, was so overwhelmed, but somehow figured out at the end with the support of so many people. So in retrospect, the first day when I walked into this chapel, I was a totally different person. I was utterly overwhelmed by anxiety, fear, and uncertainty. I was left in a place which was a thousand miles away from home. Even worse, I could not speak English at all. Although my English is still not so good, I know that, but five years ago, it was actually horrible. Like, I could barely introduce myself in English. And I still remember this. My first year in CFS was, my first class in CFS was the Integrated Middle School Science that was taught by Ms. Bradley. And throughout the, during the 40, 45 minutes class, only word that I could understand was hello. I literally had no idea what the heck was going on, and I was just lost. Yet surprisingly, uh, I succeeded in academics. I worked my butt off. I slept two hours a day, memorizing every single word in textbook. My inner competitiveness could not let myself down. It demanded me to work. It compelled me to do whatever I could do to meet my high standards. Yet, it could not stop me from feeling alone. Though I got the grace and people acclaimed me for being smart, I was never happy. I was never content. To be honest, my first year in CFS was abysmal. Many nights, I spent calling my parents, pleading to take me back home. Many days, I spent feeling vulnerable, thinking that I may end up failing to be the person who others thought I was and the person who I thought I was. It was uncertainty that ruled my life. I did not know what would happen to me. I did not know what I really wanted to do. And hindsight is 2020. I think what was wrong in me was my attitude. It was my fear that blinded me. Merely focusing on vulnerability that I possessed, I failed to perceive abundant opportunities surrounding me. Overwhelmed by abject situation that I myself imposed upon me, I refused to realize that there were so many people who were willing to reach their hands out to me immediately. So in the middle of my freshman year, I was I was considering to transfer. I was discontent with my life here, and perhaps I wanted more security. However, near the end of my freshman year, my life started to change. I started to play basketball after Bobby told me how to play. And through basketball, I actually made more friends. I started to talk more, and I, and I, my life like changed like every day, and it was so cool. And in choir, I was able to meet so many people with whom I could share, I could work hard together to attain the same goal. Rather than that, me to Garrett College where I was able to feel really at home. So as I started to involve myself into this community, more and more was offered to me, friends, mentors, and many others. Within a few months, everything changed. It was as if I was born again. It was as if I just gained my second life. Sun became brighter, sky, sky became lower, and my life actually became more enjoyable. So at the very last moment, I told my parents that I wanted to stay at CFS then I wanted to believe that this place can offer me what I wanted and what I needed. And since that day until today, I have never regretted my decision to do so. Though I complained about like, 
not having AC in the room and getting tired of like eating the same food every day. Uh, deep in my heart, I knew that I loved this place so much. Deep in my heart, I knew that I loved everyone at this school so much. And this is why I do not want to leave this place. I finally got everything that I wanted in my hands. But now I have to let them go. At the end of the ceremony, I have to give up what I worked really hard for. My friends, my mentors, and a lovely place where I can call my second home. Yeah. <laughs> Yet because of this fleeting nature, I was able to really appreciate what I had. Past few months, I tried to spend time with you guys as much as possible. I tried to learn more about you, and I tried to make more memories with you. And now I think I can finally let it go. Thank you everyone for offering me so much love. Thank you for teaching me so many things. Thank you for being so wonderful, and thank you for saving me. Thank you. 